again for the transcript, this is Marcus Kummer speaking. Uh, we are here to discuss DC coordination and continue the discussion we had yesterday. Let me start by saying I think it was a, really a very good meeting. We, last year we had a very good first meeting, but uh, yesterday I think we improved and to a large extent, I mean, thanks to you all, you prepared the papers and you stuck to the discipline of being short and snappy. Uh, but big thanks to Tatiana, she again did a superb job <laughs> steering and navigating through all the papers and really bringing out the commonalities. And what I liked towards the end, there was a real substantive discussion among the DCs and the, sort of the discovery that you have to some common uh, themes, to, but approach them from different uh, perspectives. Now, what we uh, are discussing here is uh, also has to be seen in a broader IGF context. There are various uh, efforts underway uh, to improve the IGF in its second, uh, in its 10-year cycle. Avri is leading one of the efforts, or has been leading one of the efforts, a working group on IGF improvement. There's another working group which is led by Lynn. Uh, it is a multi-year, more a strategy group on multi-year program. And there has also been discussion in that group of uh, launching a poll to ask IGF participants what they uh, see as priority issues. That has been halted. Not everybody agreed on that. And uh, I was also in that group, and I, I found it, uh, in a way, awkward that this group was also discussing substance. I think the strategy group, that is my personal view, uh, which was a minority view in that group, was that the strategy group should discuss processes and mechanisms, but should not go into the substance. The substance should come bottom up from the community. And I think uh, in particular from the best practice forums and uh, the DCs, they are best placed actually through their work, uh, they work all year long, and they are experts on spe specific subjects, and they would be best placed to suggest issues to the broader IGF community, be that issues for main sessions, be that issues for best practice forums, be that issues also for workshops. Nothing uh, prevents uh, the MAG, for instance, to uh, suggest issues that could be taken up by workshop organizers. I had sent out an uh, email uh, to this list uh, with a sort of template for questions. What are the issues you would suggest? Where, in what way is it relevant for the IGF? And is the issue also dealt with by other organizations? And obviously, uh, one of the defining features of the IGF is the multi-stakeholder character. I mean, cybersecurity is dealt with in many different instances, but nowhere is it dealt with, with all, by all stakeholders, uh, all under the same roof. And we also can discuss in what way uh, we want to cooperate in the future. We have made, I think, great progress in a sort of bottom-up harmonization uh, of uh, DCs that we stick to certain uh, same basic uh, rules. Uh, and the question is, do we want to go further? Are there other areas to explore? And also, I wondered uh, yesterday also whether the DCs may not also wish to have uh, substantive intersessional discussions in a way to continue what we had yesterday. Uh, we could for instance, have a call, we all agree on a theme, let's explore that. And as DCs, we could also make a common suggestion for this would be a really good theme for a main session, for instance, or we could consider as DCs next year, maybe we don't want to have individual papers, but we want to have a coalesce around a common theme and dig deeper into that. So these are just sort of random ideas, but I think, uh, we have not yet uh, reached our full potential as DCs in cooperation, and I would be interested in hearing your views, which way we ought to go. I wonder, Avri, whether you would like to jump in. Well, there's another issue that I think we need to, to 
start talking about or the group needs to. And that's, you know, various people were sort of unhappy about only having an hour, oh. right? And that was a result of there being, there's, there's only so much, I've been calling it temporal real estate. There's only so much time. And basically when the MAG was faced with, we've got twice as many workshop applications as we can accept. We've got the forums, we've got the this, we've got the DCs with their automatic slot um, that, that became a real strong contention point in this year's MAG. Now, I won't be on next year's MAG. I don't know what next year's MAG was gonna care about, but every year I was on the argument about DC's automatic slot and, um, <coughs> and real estate for, for sessions has been an issue. And at some point, something is gonna have to, to give. Uh, because we keep adding DCs, we keep wanting more time for them, and, and it's quite reasonable, you know, to add DCs. In fact, I'm part of trying to add another one now, uh, and, and it's quite reasonable to want a full session. It's also quite reasonable for the MAG to, to have to deal with workshops versus uh, that. So do we want to do something? Does this coordination group want to do something uh, about, you know, because so far the DCs have managed with the MAG, and, and it'll be up to next year's MAG coordinator to try and keep that, 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 that they're still bottom up, they're still self-regulating. And so vetting ideas with the MAG and, and telling them and getting their buy-in is one thing. Getting them to the point where they feel they need to start pushing on the, the DCs is another possibility. It is the MAG and they could say that the practice of automatic acceptance is one we can no longer support, et cetera. And so to avoid that or to prepare for that, we gotta start talking about that. Thank you for that. And Andrea wants to come in and say, but allow me to build on what uh, Avery said uh, and thank you for bringing that up. That is, in many ways, that was the starting point when we started uh, these coordination issues. There is this fight for prime real estate, <laughs> as it's been termed. And if you put yourself in the shoes of the MAG, it's a growing frustration. They hear, okay, here we are as a program committee, but a lot of the slots are already taken. And we spend a lot of time on selecting workshops, but here are slots for dynamic coalition, they're gone. And now increasingly also the NRIs ask for automatic slots, and then there are the open forums. Uh, everybody wants almost an open forum. So in the end, there's less and less for the MAG to decide. And I, I think... There's one other point I wanted to add. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is from the discussions in the MAG. There is a, a growing frustration, and there's a tension for... Uh, the slots, it's a fight for prime real estate, so to speak, and for the dynamic coalition, I think it's important to be seen as good citizens. And obviously, the MAG can impose criteria. If they say, look, we cannot give you all these slots, maybe you have to draw lots, or what another point could be, you can only have it if you prepare a special paper, or you know, up to now, the criteria are relatively loose for the DCs to get the slots. But this is something I think it would be in the DC's interest to be more proactive there. And you, do I have to? The one thing I forgot to say is there is an undercurrent sometimes actually stated explicitly that some of the DC's are just an end run around getting a workshop. That, that basically they're not really doing stuff dynamically all year. You know, there may or may not be coalitions, but what they really are is just a way to get yourself an automatic uh, and, and in fact, I have actually seen conversations that sort of substantiate that there may be occasions where that is indeed the case. So that, that is another thing one has to be aware of. This should not be a way just to bypass the workshop selection criteria. Andrea, we've been waiting for long. Over for you. Hang on, are we on? Um, the situation, and I, and I, I wanted to comment on that and one other aspect when Shadi Abuzaro spoke and there was another gentleman um, 
I can't think of which DC he was at, but he s wanted to have better collaboration amongst the DCs. And we sat down and talked about it. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I run the uh, Dynamic Coalition on Accessibility. And also, we have, by default, always taken on the accessibility access for every person that needs to get into IGF. So we're kind of weird. What are we? We are meddlers, but the thing is that we're a very, do we graduate into a division of the IGF and do all the work of accessibility, maintenance, and getting through people and getting them in the door and getting them accommodation? And every single DC needs to be, have uh, accessibility within it because it applies. And so DCs are important from a lot of point of view because they basically have, uh, the, I think, the say of, of different people who are the ordinary, well, not that you're all ordinary, but the, the average consumer is going to be talking to the DC through the DCs. Would you not agree, Avery? I don't know. I, mean, okay. I haven't thought about it. Okay, but well, you do know deep down, so I think, because I think what are the DCs for? And they are the voice of people who get together about their specific, con you know, especially now with net neutrality, that's a big one. So I think it was the net neutrality guy. So we have to, I think, define who we are and what value we give to the DC, to IGF. That's one thing. I think that uh, that's really what we've got to push in the MAG, is the value that the DCs give in communicating with the ordinary uh, view of people within, and they're multi-country. So I think, you know, not just a commercial interest, they are multi-country. Uh, okay, uh, in the context of IGF uh, not uh, being a policy making body and uh, not uh, having even recommendatory powers, uh, two uh, classes of uh, events, one is uh, dynamic coalitions and the best practices forums, actually create a bridge between uh, a debate without recommendation to actual policy making or action. So best practices forum actually uh, synthesize uh, uh, the discussions into good practices and bring in industry and all participants together to actually uh, encourage them to practice uh, good practices. And dynamic coalitions do a continuous uh, debate and then rec make policy recommendations in fact. And so. It's very important that uh, DCs should be encouraged. And uh, when you talked about intersessional uh, activity, it should not only be uh, uh, on the uh, internet, but also it could be, we could also explore face-to-face uh, -face opportunities where uh, most participants, if not all participants, if not a quorum, where most participants meet, like uh, the ITU forums and ICANN meetings. We could even ask ICANN to uh, give us a room for the DCs uh, during their meetings. and offer us coffee, a small room, so something like that. And so, uh, I, and uh, that, that's, that's one way to uh, move forward on that. And there was another thing that I wanted to mention that is, um, uh, is there, uh, uh, we have mainstream DCs, but, but then the DC meeting that we had uh, hardly had about uh, 50 participants. When we talk about mainstreaming, it's like mainstreaming uh, like like the inaugural session or uh, in the main hall as part of the uh, stream. Is it possible that we can do it that way next year? And one more point is, uh, is there a possibility that uh, DCs could have a representation in the MAG? You raised various points. On the main session, we were in the mainstream of the main, we, we cannot force people to come to our meeting, that's the thing, but it was in the main hall, in the main uh, meeting, I mean, it was a main session. Maybe I'm not putting it clearly, I'm talking about uh, on day one or uh, on, on a very important day or uh, along with uh, the main a, events where There's most only the opening session where there's no other parallel uh, session, otherwise there are always parallel meetings, so, the, but um, Anyway, let's go on with the speakers list. And again, for the uh, transcript, uh, please state your name, and I should have done the same thing, so it's okay. easier. Siva Subramanian. 
it's not for you, you know who I am. It's, it's for, for the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> that was Marcus speaking. So this Christopher, is yeah. Christopher Yu. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, first, um, I want to uh, support what you and Avi said 100%. Um, it was claimed yesterday that there was wide support on the DCs for of being upset to being cut to 60 minutes. I don't agree. I agree with you. I don't agree with that comment that was made yesterday. Everyone wants more time. That's just not realistic. And so I 100% agree. I understand that there are choices that have to be made. And so I think that um, I, I, and I take to heart your questions about the points you're making about the politics and making sure we are regarded as being supportive. I also take to heart what Avri says about um, being an end run to get, uh, the concern that the DCs are getting, getting an end run around to getting a workshop. And the most important thing to me is that the DCs are operating in a way that is consistent with the philosophy of the um, IGF. Um, one of the things that I saw in a DC meeting is a, um, a business representative made a, asked a question and was told that uh, the belief of that DC was every person, who, every uh, speaker who has a private interest or a uh, direct interest in the outcome was supposed to leave. Um, I found that statement to be inconsistent with the spirit of the IGF. And it was observed that um, the DC presentations often were not as disciplined about making sure all multi-stakeholder groups were represented. And to the extent to which there's a substantive concern beyond the structural one of getting a session, I think we need to make sure that the programs we as DCs put together meet the same multi-stakeholder commitment that the IGF has as a whole that we expect of the workshops and to make sure that all of the voices are represented. Um, I actually think that uh, I would propose that we as DC leaders have an obligation if there is a stakeholder group that's underrepresented to take the responsibility for engaging them, bringing them into the dialogue, because the idea that uh, a, dis a discourse that could happen with only part of the stakeholder community would effectively promote the goals of the IGF is inconsistent with the philosophy. And so, you know, I would urge us to take as our responsibility to get broad representation across multi and meaningful participation from all the stakeholder groups because there is a role for each stakeholder group to caucus among themselves and develop their positions, but when it rises to the level of the IGF and the decisions we make, it's important that we meet the standards and the philosophy set of multi-stakeholderism generally. And, and uh, um, I'm not sure that we have the processes in place to ensure that that's the case. Thank you, Martin. Yes, thank you. Martin Bottomon, for the record. Um, Indeed, I think if we look back to where we come from, that we've made a lot of progress over the last two years in, in getting more clear on that actually we need something like outputs to talk about. Actually, we need to be open. Uh, and despite the fact that we respect the autonomy from uh, different uh, dynamic coalitions of how they run the show, that we at least have some common quality standards, uh, like openness, like uh, this this document before you get a session. Uh, so we, we were progressing and I think more progress is, is, is useful, just like what you, you, you mentioned. Uh, everybody who has a direct interest in it should be at the table in principle, <laughs> instead of the other way around. Uh, it's about bringing stakeholders together and talk about it. And I think indeed, uh, maybe we can add that to our list of what we all think is important, that we actively do reach out. So have this kind of common ways of working for dynamic coalitions where I'm very happy to put this on the list. At the same time, I also see that IGF has won some credibility and will last for at least another eight years and, and maybe even beyond and uh, has a high competition for sessions. So. If we don't come with a good definition of when a DC uh, should have a session or not, uh, the Mac is going to arrange it for us. So the Mac cutting down 90 minutes to 60 is painful, particularly because every time at IGF you have new people in the room, so you're obliged to tell again, take part of that time for what it is about. Um, but I can see no better solution uh, was offered by us to them this year either. Let's try to come with a better offer for next year. 
then that can be either in making it more critical to have a session, as one of the sessions you have over a year to progress your topic. Uh, maybe even, and I'm just thinking creatively, uh, we can have a DC day somewhere, day zero or the zero minus one or whatever, uh, because it is important that we uh, who are serious about progressing the agenda on these topics that matter over year by year, that we get this opportunity to sit together and, and progress it. Uh, so, so I would really try to find creative ways to make that possible. Um, and the third factor I want to draw your attention to that indeed um, it would be so much better if we interlink better uh, uh, the work of our DCs where relevant. It's happening a little bit and it's happening ad hoc. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, overlap uh, on topics where they touch each other. Uh, let's try to do some extra effort to make, to, to make that come together better. I don't have a solution for that. I'm aware many of us are here on their private time uh, sponsoring their DC by their attendance. Uh, and I am aware of a secretariat who will not be able to do much more as long as there are four people either. But let's try to find a way on, on, on also enhancing the coherence and just get more out of it. All good points. Uh, what I sense from the discussion, there are two threads. Uh, there is maybe merit in the DCs thinking about raising the bar for getting a session. May just, I think most of you guys would fulfill it, but if it's, there may be others, newly formed, whatever, dynamic coalitions who see it as an easy way to get the slot, that they work hard to qualify then, that we have a box to tick. And you would, I know with you the coalition, <laughs> you would fulfill the criteria, but uh, this is something we could work up, be more proactive and present it to the mag. What we as DCs suggest, there are common criteria to make it a bit harder to get the slot. And then the other one is working together on a thematic issue. And this could be thinking aloud an attractive proposal, for instance, for a main session that we look at an issue from different angles, from different perspectives, as was sort of the beginning of a discussion like that yesterday. Uh, I also wonder whether Jeremy, he's working, driving one of the uh, efforts in the strategy group on whether you would like uh, to talk a bit about what you are doing. You're, you're going to have a session, I think, at lunchtime. Yeah, uh, Jeremy Malcolm for the record. And um, so I haven't been able to, sorry, I haven't been able to um, uh, get too far with this project yet, but we do have a drafting committee um, that is underneath the uh, multi-year work program working group of the IGF, which is uh, developing an option paper for uh, looking at ways in which the IGF can um, better fulfill its mandate under the Tunis Agenda, um, paragraph uh, 72G, to be able to make recommendations where appropriate. Um, this may be um, a mechanism to have broader endorsement of outputs of dynamic coalitions, or it may be something that is brand new. So it may or may not um, be something that we think can be done within the existing structures, such as dynamic coalitions, best practice fora, um, and so on. Or it might be something that's an adjunct to what we already do at the IGF. Um, this option paper was, is not going to be uh, making any decisions. It's just going to be mapping the terrain and uh, suggesting to the multi-year work program working group some things that it could in turn recommend to the MAG be considered either um, as pilot projects for 2018 or, um, or whatever the MAG may choose to do with our suggestions. So if you want to um, be a part of the group that is um, developing this option paper, then we're going to have a meeting in bilateral room one at, I think it's 1 p.m., today. And if you don't have time um, to attend the meeting, then we also have a little mailing list that you can be part of, and I can join you on to that. Thank you for that. Uh, I think there could be definitely something we could also consider, working together, see what is a theme where we have a common interest and look at it from the different perspectives there. I think there are people asking for the floor at this end of the table. Yes, Andrea and Nigel. Andrea first and then Nigel. 
question. One of the things I was going to suggest, and I did mention it, is that uh, we ought to caption our calls. Now, obviously, captioning is not that expensive, but if you don't have any money, it's expensive. So I'm proposing that we find a way to put some money into captioning. Then we have proof of what we have talked about. We can actually make accurate reports. Because when you have a captioning record, you've got evidence. And I think if the evidence of what we do in our calls, and unfortunately I'm not always able to attend them, but then people who can't attend them can know, and then we can actually see what direction we're going in. Because memory is not so good. I hate to say it, mine is getting worse. So that's my suggestion in to maybe whatever we decide to do, however we decide to project, we have a record of what we do. And you were the one that wanted to have more combination work between all the DCs, because mm -hmm. I couldn't remember your name. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure that you were. Yeah, I think you all agree. You all agree, yeah, but you were the one that made the comment, I think, yeah, downstairs. I had a comment on this, actually, but you were actually. No, I, and I am going to. I'm not sure it was the only one. No, but that yeah. you're no, the one that I noticed. Right. Exactly. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Coming out of for a sure one of the people. Yes, okay, but you know, the, the I didn't mean not to give you credit, but he was the one that I was referring to earlier when I spoke. So I will now shut up and give the floor back to Marcus. <laughs> okay. No, not Nigel and then Luca. Luca. Uh, not Nigel Hicks and I can. No, I, I only, only to say that that uh, I I, th I think you know we have to be always careful where all the different where all the different uh, pieces fit in, a, in 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 something like the IGF and uh, I mean the you know the pressure on the on the real estate or the time constraints or, 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 or whatever I think is real I, I, I hope the mag can uh, can look at the, the whole program afresh on 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 how it addresses the, the, the program I think realistically if you can't get ideas over in an hour or an hour and 15 minutes then then you know there is, is is something wrong unless you know there's a real need for longer longer sessions and so i think i mean i take the point that sometimes you need to summarize where you are but but i think you know some some written uh comments can can al also help help that and so I, I i think you know everything has to have its its, its place but we need to be flexible Luca. <coughs> Morning, Luca Belli for the record. Sorry for the delay. I have a breakfast meeting that was quite uh, uh, late. First of all, so apologies for the delay. Secondly, uh, two suggestions. One, if we want to work together, I think we should start uh, having a sort of map of what we are doing so that at least we have uh, a shared document where people can say, well, this is exactly what I'm doing or this is exactly part of what I'm doing. So, I mean, I think the, 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 outcome, uh, the outcome papers are very good, but uh, it's time consuming to read uh, 13 outcome papers. Uh, I'm part of two coalitions that, that have produced two 250 pages books, and I don't think you will have the time or maybe will be willing to read them. <laughs> so it's be better if we distill uh, the content of what we do in some bullet points let's say 10, uh, and we share them so that we know we can know which kind of synergies we can create. And then I, another suggestion regarding uh, the, the structure, the form of what we can do, we could have some sort of, uh, let's say, uh, progressive approach if you want with dynamic coalitions that are producing extensive work and that, to, that have to present it, present the coalition, request feedback and have debate, maybe we could have a little bit, a slot that is a little bit longer, and dynamic coalition that are maybe a, having the, a very similar debate to the previous year, having a slighter, shorter uh, time slot, I don't know, 45 minutes for one and 90 for the others, uh, that could be an option. Uh, I, from, I, I was involved in, in three different dynamic coalitions and it was very challenging to have, for instance, for net neutrality, both feedback for, for to the zero rating map, the presentation, and debate with 160 people uh, in the room. Uh, it was really challenging to do this in 60 minutes. So uh, say a couple, of, I mean, if 15 minutes more would be very good. Maybe if the mag is so persistent in <laughs> giving us less time than the others, at least gave us 75 minutes. And if someone uh, is doing a presenting another uh, outcome that is very similar to the previous year, uh, maybe can do the work in uh, 50 minutes. 
thank you. Yeah. Uh, th this is picks up on what Martin said in a way, said raising the bar a bit. And so this would be a proposal for to have two tracks, one for uh, short meetings and one for dynamic coalitions, which have worked on a more substantive outcome to have a longer slot. This could be an option, but you have been patiently, Marianne, please. Uh, for the record, Marianne Franklin, <coughs> Internet Rights and Principles Coalition. Yeah, thanks. I just want to uh, um, say that we had, we were in the spaceship room yesterday, which had its advantages and disadvantages. I think main sessions are by their nature um, quite difficult to create more dynamic interaction than we would wish. So I'd just like to thank Tatiana once again uh, for a wonderful uh, job. And, but it was, it's very clear that we are working together, that we are coordinating. Because the minute the conversation opened up, the room started to see that these are groups that talk to each other and have talked to each other. I like the idea of a database, as Luca suggested, a document in which perhaps all the outputs of all the di dynamic coalitions over the last 10 years are, are, are listed. I think it's time to create a, um, a communal memory. My second point is that um, I am not in favour of having a two-track idea that there are some DCs doing more than others. I think we have either one hour all together, or we all have an hour and a half, or we all have an hour and a quarter. So uh, there's no reason to start having hierarchies of one DC short or longer. So um, I'm willing to compromise on the hour and a half being cut back to an hour. However, I'd like to remind the room that we always, in the old days, at least up until last year, had to submit substantial proposals for our workshop session. So where this narrative got in to the mag that somehow the DCs are floating in there without doing any work, I would like that corrected right now. It's only this year that we actually were not requested by a certain time to, set, to, to submit a specific proposal. So I'm all for returning to that basic criterion. I have no problem with that. But let's not have this narrative that somehow we've been sliding through the back door for 10 years. I object to that most strongly because it is incorrect. So I'm happy to bring that kind of box tick that you suggested, Marcus, back in. I'm also quite like the idea for next time, having a theme um, that's a focus for the main session that all the DCs speak to in all their diversity. So I'm happy with that idea if people want to move with that. But finally, I'd like to note that for the second year in a row, um, people in the room are saying, well, this is the first session, the only session they've been to where there seem to be many, many, many topics on the table because all the sessions in IGF tend to be focused on particular themes. I have no problem with that, but we must always, as Martin reminds us, always lead the room in uh, and not just helicopter people into a conversation that we assume they understand. So whatever we do next year, let's have 10 minutes setting up the room with who we are, what we do, and why this DC main session is working the way it is, why it is specific and why it is so diverse. So I hope I've covered all the um, points and reminded us that we have always had to submit substantial proposals for our meetings. But we have been always thankfully allowed to run our meetings as we wish. We wanted to do a live wiki session um, in our meeting and we could up to a point, but a lot of people in the room discovered that they had to re-register online in order to, to participate um, on the comment section. So first I think it was fantastic that that was set up. I'd like to thank Eleonora for that. Secondly, I'd like just to see that made even more possible and in many formats we can use. I hope I've covered the territory and I hope that's been clear. I can't see the transcript. But um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, and totally with Andrea about, you know, about making it easier to participate. Um, if you don't even get your audio going, so it's a uh, disability if your technology doesn't work as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, just. Uh, your last comment, I think that is to a large extent my fault. I think I, I, I tried to uh, set the scene a bit and explain where we are, but I, I what definitely was not explicit enough and I should have made it clearer in my introduction. Uh, no, no. I meant that, that each DC, we, I talked about with Tatiana that each D, DC has a minute or the moderator takes half a minute to tell the room what these DCs do. 
whether it be the chair or the moderator. So I'm not, I'm not apportioning blame. No. I'm just saying that um, it is an important anchor point yeah. for a decision that is based on such diverse um, interest groups, so yeah. to speak. Uh, no, I, I didn't take it as a <laughs> criticism as such, but I realized myself, talking to people, that it was not clear to participants in the room, and Tatiana would like to come in, but my feeling is it's best done as an introduction and not by the moderator, because it would break the flow of the narrative. But Tatiana, please. Thank you. Actually, whoever moderates this session next year, I also believe that it can be implemented to what moderator is doing, because given the each dynamic coalition, one minute of introduction is quite a good idea, but not when we have these kind of time constraints, you know. Um, I think that whoever moderates this session next time, and you might, might pass uh, my comment to this person, might want to start with like saying, this is dynamic coalition like for the Internet of Things. They're doing this, this and that, and their goals for this year were this, this and that. And then in your paper you did this and that, and, and please answer this question. I, might, I, I think that might work. You know, I, I, just because of, all, all, of, of time constraints I felt, I didn't feel like I was in a capacity to extend my introduction because I could have introduced more about the papers, you know, because some of them had more interesting points that, uh, that I pointed to. And in this way, I also think that this is where a coalition can cooperate with a moderator. So moderator makes the questions, but coalition sends intro lines, you know, what the coalition likes moderator to highlight. And I think that this will marry two concepts, what previously we think would be done, coalition will send, squ send questions, and what I did this year, like completely questions out of my head, right, based on the paper. I think this will marry two concepts, what coalition wants people, audience, and whatever to know about them shortly, and then a question from a moderator. I think this will, will be a good compromise and will solve um, the issue of time and, and, and introduction and everything. All good points, just two points. A, we don't know yet whether we're going to have a main session next year. <laughs> That'll be up to the new mag. And, and B, if we do, I hope that you'll be the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> I would be, of course, happy to moderate, but I, I don't know the optics of this, like having um, the same coalitions, the same session, and, and the same moderator. I, I don't know if the optics of this is good. So you might want to consider inviting someone else next time and then me again later. I don't know. Um, you, you, yes, I, I think <laughs> just the optics. The room will be different. Though. Well, we have started discussing also next year's session may be different as with the idea of maybe work towards a common theme. Uh, now I lost track of Martin, yes. No problem, uh, Tatjana. And again, also I have my uh, appreciation to the excellent moderation. And the proposition you just made would be valid even if you have one team next year, because then we may come in on one theme, but it's still interesting that people don't only hear an abbreviation or in the room, but one sentence more, and, and not two minutes more. <laughs> okay, two sentences is possible too. <laughs> no, no, well understood. And, and it makes you also uniquely positioned because um, as far as I know, you're probably the only one who's read all the input. Uh, I don't see that uh, the input is not read by anybody, but not all the input by everybody. That, uh, anyway, uh, just to confirm that, uh, yeah, re really very much on track, but uh, Marianne, also the point you made that you believe it's not true that uh, some coalitions are not as serious as others. Um, I think we, we need to be a bit careful in presuming that we know that. I don't know that. I haven't read everything. And and what Avri said is th she's actually hurt actively. So I, 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 I tend to believe there may be examples. And for sure I'm aware that uh, there's a tendency for people to try to do anything to get a session. And that's not true for most of us. I'm 100% I'm with you. But let's keep our mind open that we take ourselves care that it's not going to happen with DCs. That we take, do that ourselves and don't leave it to the Mac to need to find out whether we're serious or not.
Of course. Yeah. Hi. No, no, thank you. I take your point entirely. What I was talking about was that's one point, point taken there. Yeah, but we, until I have evidence, I cannot uh, work either way. My point is about the fact that we have always, until just this meeting, had to submit a proposal for our meetings, uh, making clear what we were going to do. So there had always been a process by which um, DCs. The issue about which DCs do more, what, that's another issue. I just wanted to correct the record historically, having been doing this for like a long time, that there was always a means by which we had to submit a program and al outline and to show that we have a range of um, people speaking or why we want to do the session we want to do. I'm happy to make sure that that continues. On that, that's my point, that's all. Yeah. Oh, and, and on that one, that second point, uh, that's why I asked for the floor. I really wanted to to comment on that. Uh, other sessions already have their workshop description up at the moment that the MAC establishes the program. We don't. We get a slot somewhere at some time. And then if we're up to it, we present some material on that. Uh, I think it would be good that we would go in the same flow of time as the normal workshops in the realization that it should be part of a longer year uh, line of things. But let, let, let's make sure we submit our plans as well that at the same time. I don't yes. know why that has slipped. I don't know whether Eleonora can or wants to explain. Or, or, but the uh, points, all, all points well taken, but that's from the max side and the criticism was they may submit a uh, program, but we are not here to approve it or not. You see, whereas with workshops, the MAG is the ultimate decision maker whether a workshop gets accepted or not. And that is the frustration seen from the MAG. I don't know, Eleonora, do you have an answer to that question? Um, I can just speak briefly uh, uh, about the timeline for putting together the program. I mean, traditionally, um, the we've focused on workshops first, that, that's sort of what's, what's always happened. But I, I do like Martin's suggestion that maybe, you know, uh, slots or, or whatever space be considered for DCs at the time that workshops are also being considered. I think just because the workshops are such an involved process, um, we've, you know, we, we give them a lot of time in the beginning and then tend to work on other elements of the program afterward. But I, I think it, it makes it makes but, uh, sense to be more. Do you know why this year there was no they were not asked to submit the program? Um, that's so I think there's a little bit of confusion there. So uh, each DC uh, does is asked to put up a description, um, but it's that's not really part of the requirement for getting the session. For getting the session, a DC should be able to. Um, uh, submit evidence that they are working and active and uh, of course all DCs did that this year and, and that's that's how the process has worked. Well, maybe we could tighten up this process and make it also as part of the conditions that uh, and maybe the same deadline as workshop proposals just think you know, to have it synchronized a bit for the whole yes you're on the list and you're on. Uh, and then that we have a deadline and if you don't submit a program outlined by that deadline then you're not in. Something like that, that I think would work. But please also state your name. Thank you. Israel Rosas for the record, uh, Mexican representative to the MAG as a former host country, and also a member of the steering committee of the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance. Um, I think that we should take advantage of the um, months uh, before the first MAG uh, meeting in order to do our, our planning. I fully support the idea of having a, a common theme to better outreach our our work as dynamic coalitions. And also I think that uh, Lucas' idea about the, um, the mapping of the topics could be an excellent idea to better communicate our, our continuous work as dynamic coalitions, and also as an opportunity to do more outreach to the people that uh, is interested in the um, several topics that the uh, dynamic coalitions are, are dealing with. Uh, yesterday I was talking with a um, girl, girl from Peru that uh, doesn't, doesn't know much about the dynamic coalitions, but uh, are, uh, she, she's very interested in 
several of the topics. Perhaps we could uh, have a more uh, a communications effort and um, having a common theme uh, and also the, the mapping of all the topics could be uh, a good, uh, a very good tool to to to, the, to do more more outreach. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Siva Subramanian from the DC uh, on core internet values. I disagree with Martin's suggestion because of one danger uh, when you uh, have uh, DCs on the uh, workshop uh, uh, stream when you place that suggestion to MAG, there is a danger of um, DCs being evaluated, uh, DC proposals being evaluated on the same uh, cr criteria as workshops and uh, DCs uh, getting, losing their importance and uh, becoming equated to workshops. So uh, one way to bridge the disconnect between MAG's understanding of what DCs do and what we actually do is to lighten uh, the MAG's work or uh, to make it easy for MAG uh, by actually uh, uh, discussing uh, DC proposals within the DC coordination group and then making it clear that whatever uh, proposals uh, go to the MAG or uh, almost final. So part of the coordination can be done by the DC coordination group and uh, we can vet the proposals, we can work, we can look at uh, what DCs are working and what DCs are not working, maybe reduce the number of DCs from nine to eight or whatever. I mean, if that decision comes from here internally, that's more acceptable. And some lighter suggestions, one is uh, the problem of transcripts and uh, Olivier probably has a simpler solution of recording a conversation with a device. Uh, which can eventually be transcribed by uh, uh, a volunteer if funding is not available. So recording is uh, easier and uh, then the... Uh, no, no, uh, th th there will be... No, no, record, recording is possible and after that, uh, uh, the transcription. So the suggestion from Martin, day zero minus one is very good and I want to re-emphasize my suggestion on face-to-face -face, uh, intercession. Oh, thank you. And, and one point, at the risk of sounding undiplomatic, I want to say it. Uh, there is a certain degree of imbalance in MAG. I have noticed for the last six years that uh, certain proposals are uh, approved, uh, certain uh, organizers are encouraged, and uh, uh, in some cases uh, where uh, the workshop proposal is uh, obviously from, uh, with a lobbying interest, those proposals are approved and uh, certain NGOs uh, that work for money are uh, encouraged to uh, sometimes, sometimes, and I may be very wrong because I'm not part of the MAG. I could be totally wrong. I'm just sharing the feeling. So I would be happy to go away. I mean, I, I would be happy to withdraw my comment uh, if uh, somebody uh, more educated says that I'm totally wrong and that MAG functions uh, impartially. Thank you. Just one comment on, I, I think no, nobody uh, suggested uh, that the MAG approves or rejects the dynamic coalitions. The idea was more to synchronize it uh, with the workshop proposal and to go back to what Marianne said and also make it a condition for dynamic coalitions being accepted that you have a program outline in time at the same time. So. But the idea was not, I don't think anybody in the room suggested that it goes to the MAG for approval or not. I think that we have a, a consensus around that. But uh, look, and, uh, okay, Luca, then Marianne again, and Israel as well. Yeah. I would uh, strongly oppose the idea of having a dynamic coalition day minus one or something like that for, one, uh, for a very pragmatic reason. Uh, I mean, IGF is already four day long with day zero, five day long. We cannot ask to people that are sometimes support self find funding their trip to travel and uh, to add an, an extra day. I mean, an, an extra day in Geneva, it's a lot for someone that is coming from a developing, from a developing country. And uh, you, I would never, I would really feel uncomfortable to ask to people 
that are already working for free during the whole year, also to, pa to pay an extra day to have a dynamic coalition day. I, I like the idea in principle, but pragmatically speaking, I see it very unfeasible and s maybe even some unfair for those who have less uh, wealthy budgets. Uh, so it will have, to have minus two or, or five, I don't know. But, well, but, we, we, but we could think about uh, day zero, to have an event on day zero. But uh, we have, hang on, let's not go out. We have Marianne, Israel, Jeremy, and Andrea. Okay. And uh, Christophe. Yeah, thanks very much. I think we've moved into an area of sort of stock taking and about uh, quality control on the general level. Uh, the the, the um, schedule app is really, really great to have. I just want to um, emphasize. Um, and this is the place when one can update the material that was sent in for the workshop's submission. Now, I'm an academic. I organize conferences all the time. I assess content all the time. So I'm always looking at the end of the day when the conference or the event is about to start at at the schedule, and I want to see updated material. I want to see who's speaking. Um, and in this case, one can see this year, in terms of the original workshop proposals that got onto the program, that there's a very uneven quality of communication. So we are all, it behoves all of us, dynamic coalitions, best practice forums, those who have submitted meeting, uh, uh, workshop, and main session, submissions and have been accepted onto the program, it behoves all of us to have that material pristine because this is for the whole world looking in. So there is an unevenness, not just in the MAG representation, which is an ongoing issue, and we hope to improve always on that, but in terms of those officially accepted workshops from other parties that are still coming into the IGF with a day to go with material that tells me nothing at all. So I would like to suggest that that quality control is imposed on all contributors and participants within the week leading up to the IGF. If they're on the program, then their material needs to be up to date and complete. So I could just have that as a stock taking point so that it isn't always about how the DCs are not conforming to a certain magic standard. This behoves all of us. So um, I just, but I want to thank once again Eleonora for all her sterling work. <laughs> And I just love the schedule app, and I think people underuse it. They underestimate just how important it is. Thank you. Uh, Israel? Thank you. Uh, Israel Rosas, for the record. I also oppose to the idea of having a minus one day because it also implies more costs for the host country, and it uh, <laughs> implies a modification of the host, host country agreement or something out of our control. Um, also, I think the MAG uh, also do their job on a good faith basis about uh, the comments of, uh, I don't know, some kind of uh, preferences. And uh, perhaps we could uh, think about uh, a, a track of webinars during the weeks before the, the meeting in order to do more outreach and more the, the, the I don't know, like a um, kind of a short uh, story about the every coalition or something like that. And uh, also, if uh, there is a, if we are going to do a, a, a specific uh, effort on outreach, I'll be more than happy to volunteer. Thank you. quickly. Day zero minus one could be in several forms. It need not be day zero minus one. It could be day zero. It could be day four and a half. It could be uh, the evening of uh, on the last day. It could be a reception by uh, DCs uh, to the whole IGF or it could be in any form. So just the idea is that apart from having uh, a DC meeting and apart from having a DC coordination session, apart from having a DC reporting session, we could also have uh, a, a more relaxed uh, environment, which could be informal, which could be formal, which could be in the evening, which could be at night. It could be anything. So we, we don't have to dismiss it outright. Thank you. Jeremy is next speaker on the list. Well, my point was just a very short one, and I think it's already been made that um, on day minus one, there's a civil society meeting, um, so that may not be suitable. Uh, Andrea first, and then Luca. I can't remember what I'm 
I, I'm sorry, I've, I've done a complete blank. It was, it grabbed me at the time, but I'm, I've lost it because I've been following every, we've, we've diversed. I, just the one thought though that I've been thinking about over and over again. I think we have to make a collective paper with every dynamic coalition uh, giving their views on why their contribution is important. If nobody said that, then submit it to the MAG as an official document. I mean, what we do, just maybe even just a paragraph, and that that way they know who we are, what we are, and what we do. Well, that could be in a way uh, building on what uh, Luca and Marianne suggest. Exactly. That, uh, mapping of topics uh, and database and have a, a joint. Uh, People don't read a lot. They read something short, sweet, and yes. snappy. So that's the, the point about when you get into databases, uh, is the, are the people in the mag really gonna look at that? Uh, you really wanna do like a New York Times news thing that will just say blang, 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 <laughs> and this is what we do. And we need, not only do we want you to join us, but we need to report back to you. But, but I think that this is, uh, goes along what you suggested. I think uh, the mapping of topics, uh, you know, with the bullet points, but uh, Luca, you want to yeah. suggest? And I, I think that, uh, Luca Belli for the record, uh, I think that another good idea would be to uh, use the document uh, page of the Dynamic Coalition pages. So every Dynamic Coalition has a document, a, rep a report or document page in, in its own page. And uh, if we start, if we just start to put in that document page all the outcome we have produced over the past years that f frequently are only on the website of the Dynamic Coalitions and not in this document page, uh, I think we already, we can also not only have bullet points of what we do, but also link them to more specific materials so that actually builds up on what uh, and I was just saying uh, that uh, about having maybe snappy uh, paragraphs or even only a tweet-like indication of what we do in the, bu in the bullet points. And then for those that are interested, I don't know, uh, let's say in uh, uh, recommendations on terms of service, they directly have the link to the document or if they directly want to, to search the document. By the way, the, the, the IGF has also, the, the website has also, a, the IGF, the, the website itself has a document section. So there is a material, a, a document section where we can, w I don't, I don't wa see why we can have a dynamic coalition page with all the document that we have been producing, being dynamic coalitions part of the IGF and being dynamic coalitions document part of the IGF. I like the idea of a summary document in principle, but I found myself, I pulled up the list of the dynamic coalitions, and I'm trying to figure out if there's a theme that you can really use. And you know, Marianne says, I do conferences all, as well, and you often have someone who's asked to sum up something, and you can find generally a thread to, say three papers, you can find a thread. But it, often it's quite contrived or thin. And so, you know, in a way, forcing out a theme, sometimes it works when you have a strong theme. You know, for example, I'm doing an exercise now where I'm thinking, okay, around one of the SDGs in our head. Well, on some level, all of our work is connected on some level of generality. You could find some connection to something. But for some of them, I'm just thinking climate change, blockchain, they all have some relevance to just about any issue, but finding a thing that really captures what the essence is and Often, if you're going to find a theme, it's going to take them outside what they naturally emphasize. So, yeah, you can connect to be a good citizen, but it's going to be hard. I mean, it's uh, when I think about the diversity of things that are interesting to people and the things that are important, I just want to be realistic in the sense that um, you end up having a document that will be at a fairly high level of generality by necessity to find that, and it becomes a Christmas tree where you get an easy theme and everyone hangs something on it. Yeah, yeah. So... I, you know, it's a great, I think uh, decentralizing and drawing some themes, but I, falling in love with, and we have to think about this dynamically over time because different themes will emphasize different things at different times. But it's, it's going to be work, and it's going to be not easy to do. And, and, and I want to go back to the, I, like many people, I raised my hand a long time ago, and the, to, we've sort of lost this, but the idea of putting us back into the regular consideration of, of how 
programs are value I, I'd like to, I think is sound. I just wanna make sure that we maintain the same standards that other panels are held to in the spirit of the IGF, which is making sure that there's, uh, that, I mean, I've heard complaints not just about DC stuff, but about workshop panels that they've lost. If you look at the composition, many of them don't have representation of all the stakeholder groups. And that is something to have that meet. The whole idea is to get in the room with people who don't entirely agree with you. Because if you leave them out of a conversation and come to an agreement, you haven't really accomplished anything consistent with what we're trying to do. The point is to really get all the perspectives out. And we need to hold ourselves to that standard and make sure that we're leading that. Because if we're expecting this to be from the bottom up and really driving sort of the agenda and helping contribute to the agenda of the IGF, it's, in, it's actually more imperative that we live up to that. Just uh, a comment uh, on that, uh, what Christopher was saying. Uh, I, th I agree in pr on principle with uh, man almost everything he said, but just to say that if we... Uh, just, just for the record, it's Luca speaking. Sorry, yeah, Marcus. it's Luca <laughs> Belli speaking, not Marcus. Uh, the, the qu the, so we have to be pragmatic again and think that if we, I mean, what we are differentiate ourselves from worship because not only because we um, we, we are a continuous work, a continuous stream of ideas and work over the years, but also because we produce outcomes, right? So uh, I totally agree to have the same criteria, or the same criteria as with workshops, but uh, if you have to produce an outcome, which I mean, we are differentiate ourselves because we produce concrete things, right? And people and everyone is free to participate in the production of this outcome, right? If you have in a specific coalition uh, some people that some a stakeholder group that does not participate, uh, it is then you can you will have a, a debate with this stakeholder group at at uh, the at your annual meeting to include them. But if the people if when they have the possibility to participate to the outcome production, those people that do not participate then it, it is, and you have a lot of other people that have dedicated time to the, to the, to the development of the outcome, then it's hard to say, uh, well, the people that have de dedicated a lot of free time uh, for free voluntarily to the development of, of the outcome, you will not have to the, 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 uh, the possibility to, do, to expose what you have done because I have to respect the criteria for, and give some room to other people that have, have not participated at all. I would rather have a 90 minutes slot where everyone can participate and, and provide feedback. So um, if everyone were allowed, the groups were allowed to participate, I would be more sympathetic. As you missed the beginning of the meeting, um, in one dynamic coalition, a group was told that they could not participate because they had a private interest in the outcome. And on some level, um, every government, technical, we all have, a private, we have an interest in the outcome. I mean, that's the whole idea. Second, I actually think that if there's not meaningful participation, I also made the statement, it's our obligation as DC leaders to engage them. And it is, if they're not in the room, I think that's a failure on our part. The DC, if they do not find a way to frame an issue that brings in all the stakeholder groups, the DC is failing. And in many ways, if you have an outcome document, it should have been pre-worked in where you brought that into engaging those groups. And it's, um, it's a tall order, but the reality is, if we're going to hold out production outcomes of DCs as the output of the IGF, and it, the failure, the process failed to engage all the major stakeholder groups, I don't know that we can properly call that an outcome of the IGF, despite the contributions of the time and the commitment that people make. The goal is really to try to find solutions that work across the community that are going to be, this is what I'm worried about we're losing as the IGF. And if we, um, some comments, and, and just to share it in the halls, they're worried that um, the evolution of the IGF over time has become less engaged and more polarized, and that there's less of that ability to reach across. The dynamic coalitions are supposed to be the place where that happens. And um, I'm concerned that if we had an outcome and, and, mistake, and if the scenario that Luca describes unfolds, that's a problem. And the solution to me is not to proceed. The, problem, the solution is to try to figure out a way to make it our internal processes proceed consistent with the way the IGF did in its early years and the way that we aspire to always to operate. This turns into a <laughs> meta discussion on 
how to get to uh, what is also what Jeremy is uh, uh, driving, uh, how to have IGF outcomes. And the, um, let's look back. I mean, the DCs were the first who w started intercessional work and w work towards outcomes. Right at the beginning, there were talks, let's have working groups of the IGF. And there was a no-no. So the agreement was let them uh, emerge, let have DCs as bottom-up initiatives. And that uh, worked reasonably well. But we are now at the stage where we want to see, can we take it a step further? And that is indeed a difficult stage. But Andrea, you want to come in? When you say that, you know, if we don't get the people, we have a real obstacle in getting the people because A, we can't uh, communicate with some, we can't physically get them here. We have wonderful disasters, which we had this morning with our driver who had the only pass that I organized to drive in, had a car accident last night and blew his tires. So, you know, I'm up at two in the morning writing emails to people, blah, 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 blah. Now, so you have to think about reality and saying there are circumstances you have hardcore people who always join things. And if you want to get a massive DC that attends here, I think we'd all go crazy. Because it's, we, have enough, we have so many people here, not enough space, not enough rooms, not enough whatever. And the UN is very antiquated, which is the other situation. So it depends. Like Mexico had all these wonderful volunteers from the university. That was fabulous. That was one of the best IGFs I ever went to because of those kids. So it's all relative as to what's going on. And um, you, especially, I'm going to get involved in accessibility. B yes. Oh, of course you, Lucas. Uh, you, 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 I was you. just making a point on that point, you know, because the more we learn, the better we are on that. Lucas, you're already in. Don't you worry. <laughs> Everybody in this room is in. Avery and then Christopher. I just wanted to make, this is Avery Doria speaking. I just wanted to make a quick point about the we want to. I think that, that part of the sort of bottom up self formation of dy dynamic coalitions is that now that we've gotten big enough where the sort of, we have to, 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 to start coordinating ourselves and doing that. That it isn't just the, oh, we want, I think it's actually necessary. One of the things about getting people here has ha actually reminded me of another point that, that various people have mentioned to me and actually asked me to channel, and I forgot about it until just now, which is we had a very small relative to the number of people in dynamic coalitions and elsewhere um, participation in our meeting, on-floor participation. And people were wondering if these dynamic coalitions are so dynamic and, and, and such coalitions, why didn't they attend the meeting about dynamic coalitions where you were all sort of coalescing and coming together and, and sharing? Why were there so few people there? There were the leaders and then, and then a few, you know, and-, and It's money. Well, no, but they're here. Okay. Many of well, uh, if if we have to have meetings where an hour is not long enough, and 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 everything else, then there are obviously dynamic coalition people here who are meeting. Why? And as I say, I don't know the answer. I'm not judging it. I was asked to channel it, and it was an empty room. And if we had, how many? Thirteen. Uh, you know, 10 of them participate, no, 13 participating in there, and then the bunches, you know, if we had had 10 people from each one, that room would have been crowded. So I just, that was, as I say, I'm, I'm channeling that comment, but sitting up there at the front and looking at an empty room does bring it home. Christopher, then Luca, then Marianne. Uh, so Christopher, you, so I, I, you're right. I mean, one of the criteria we should have in terms of valuing this is meaningful participation from all the stakeholder groups. I mean, it, so I understand it's hard, but Marcus, I think if we're going to take it to the next level, it's actually more important that we really rigorously think about this. And in fact, you know, we know when, so I think all of us have, well, I, I'll confess my problem. We have a problem with governments. It's a single stakeholder group, it's hardest to get engaged. But on the other hand, if we proceed without the governments, we're not going to succeed in our goals. And so, you know, one of the things I'm taking, this thing you're thinking is, as a leader of an organization, we have to 
not just think about pushing things through, like getting outcomes for the sake of having outcomes. We don't want to put, put time on an outcome where if the governments don't support it, they're, it's, it's a waste of time. And so to try to find a way to engage those considerations, live in their side, take it seriously, and understand the things that they care about um, is important. And I would say that, yes, it's important to get outcomes, and yes, we're taking it to the next station, but stage, but my takeaway is that it becomes even more important to really make sure that we t stick to the spirit of the IGF. And that I think make sure that, that, um, that we organize ourselves in a way that engages meaningful participation from all groups. Luca. Yeah, just uh, one suggestion and a comment. Uh, well, the thi I think that, uh, well, a comment on what Avery was saying before about why people don't participate. I think it's uh, maybe explained by the fact that the I coalition participants, they joined the I coalition because they are interested in the specific topic. They are not necessarily interested in the other 12 uh, that we are discussing at the main session. So if I'm very interested in uh, accessibility, maybe I'm not at all interested in blockchain and net neutrality. So I will prefer to, to, to attend a workshop that is at the same time on accessibility rather than going to, to, to see what they are saying in about net neutrality and, and uh, blockchain. And the, another uh, suggestion that is very practical to engage people, I think, is to let them know directly what we are doing. So uh, perhaps the Secretariat could consider to send a, an email to part IGF participants uh, one week before with simp simply stating, uh, in one week there will be the IGF, and these are the outcome that will be discussed. These are the best practice for uh, outcome. These are the Dynamic Coalition's outcome. Uh, you are kindly invited to attend the meeting and to the, dynamic, the main session of the Dynamic Coalitions. And I don't know if there is a main session or a main session of best practice for her, but uh, if, you, uh, if, if the Secretariat would uh, send this communication before the IGF, I think we would raise much more awareness on what we are doing and perhaps we would have more uh, participants at the main session on Dynamic Coalitions. Marianne? <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks, everyone. Marianne uh, Franklin, just for the record. Uh, if we spoke, focusing on the main session, um, once again, I'm thinking as we think that um, this conference is topic driven as much as anything, the IGF. So if we were to come up with a theme for the main session next year that the dynamic coalitions all contribute to, then we achieve the two goals. We have a clear theme. And we have a way of uh, showing that there are dynamic coalitions covering a spectrum of issues that can all speak to a theme in different ways. But the thing about empty rooms, Chris, you know, you know, you know it's hit and miss. And the main sessions are, are particularly difficult. And I don't think the room was as empty as you think, um, Avery. And I think it was a big room. And I, but I take the point that, you know, there is a question raised, but I feel we're, we're getting locked into a very disempowering, if I may use the word, has it come up? A disempowering narrative here. We must work harder to have the main session feel topic thematically strong enough to attract people to come. I don't think it's enough to just say because we're DCs or best practice for it, that on its own is enough to bring people in here. We need to bring people into a session that has relevance for the topics of the day. So for me, I'd like to, I'd like to endorse the idea that we work towards a theme. I'd like to endorse the idea we keep the meetings. I'm willing to compromise. I'm afraid, Luca, much as I'd like an hour and a half, if we have to compromise, I'll go for an hour because those are the places we do the work. I'm, I'm happy with having um, uh, returning or reminding ourselves to submit clear programs for our respective DC meeting sessions, but I would also like to urge the whole participant um, population for the IGF next year to brush up their information once they're accepted onto the program. And that's all I really need to say, but I think, I think we need to turn the narrative around and think there is more work to do. The third main session year, main sessions are particularly difficult to do. So we are doing fine, we just need to do more so I just want to just turn the way we're talking around and um, perhaps think about a theme for next year and just move forward. 
Um, and Chris, if there's a big issue with a particular DC you have, I respect your point, but there are now 15 or 18 DCs. I'd hate to be judged by, and there may, I'm not aware of the situation. There may have been a context in which this was happening. Who knows? So yeah, um, let's keep that in proportion perhaps and keep an eye on things. Uh, thank you. I think I have to close the speakers list. We have to wrap up soon, but we have, uh, Olivier, Christophe, and Sivas, and then uh, I try and uh, also ask Aubrey to come to a conclusion. Olivier. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Olivier Crepin Leblanc speaking uh, for the transcript. Um, I haven't spoken yet, and I was trying to listen to the different points around the room. It's quite uncommon, isn't it, for me not to speak? <laughs> I wasn't checking my emails or anything, I was listening. <laughs> I was listening. No, uh, just a few points, you know, the, the um, so sort of rewinding back. First, the 60 minutes instead of the 90 minutes. I, I take the point and I agree with what uh, um, um, Math um, Martin had said regarding a session. When we have a session here, we actually take part of the session to try and explain what the DC does because it's outreach as much as, as everything else. It's the opportunity to have more people in the room and okay, maybe the dynamic coalition network neutrality, people would say, oh, it's about network neutrality. But for many other uh, DCs, the topic isn't quite that obvious. So there is some time needed to explain what, what we're doing. And then we launch into the core discussion. And as you know, it sometimes takes time for the room to warm up and for people to get more into it. And by the time we're in full swing, oh, sorry, we've run out of time. Um, so the 60 minute thing is a little tight and I would appreciate having a bit more, even 15 minutes more would be, uh, uh, would be helpful. Um, on the intersessional work, um, we keep on talking about the DCs, there's also the best practice forums and I think that we are missing an opportunity to also work with them uh, because there's also some very good outputs coming from there. On the topics of having a common session next next year or common theme, I don't think we can even start discussing this until we've done the mapping that Luca suggested. And I think that I, I don't know what type of mapping you want to do, whether it's a mind map or something more elaborate, but I would highly uh, um, suggest that each one of the DCs maps what they are dealing with, so they map their own things, and we use a common standard for mapping, and then we can put all of the maps together and start finding the common themes between them. And only then will we be able to actually find out what we can talk about if there's something that puts us all together. Uh, on the promotion of the DCs, I think that the internet governance website is a disgrace. Um, the IGF website, I mean, it's, it's, you know, oh, it's on the first page, but it's bloody hard to find. And I'm absolutely amazed that when you look at the program, each one of the DCs, I mean, certainly the one that I attended, and, and I, you mentioned 160 people in the uh, network neutrality one. Uh, we had about 30 people by the end of our session. We were in one of the first sessions in the morning, and everyone was queuing outside, so that was another problem. Um, but the, uh, you know, 30 people and so on, we could have filled that room with the um, that big room when the, uh, the DCs were all together in the same room. However, I think it's not something that we have a problem with, it's something that most of the attendees in this place have, which is that everyone likes to go into their echo chambers and not listen to what is going on outside their own room. Um, so when we have the DC main forum with all of those different topics, people go, oh, I don't want to hear about this, 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 that. I'm just going to be focusing on that topic. And that is something which is a bit of a problem in IGF, but I don't think it's something for us to, uh, um, to, uh, to resolve. And then finally, um, when uh, on looking at the um, um, uh, problem with imbalance of stakeholders, this again is an IGF problem. There are very few governments, and in fact, over the years, I've, I've found there are less now than there used to be. And as far as private sector is concerned, well, I've had several people from the private sector come to me and say, is this just a civil society uh, meeting? Because it feels increasingly so, and that's not good. But that's for the MAG to deal with. Thank you. Thank you. Christoph and then Sivasen can ask you to be short. So I agree that it's for the MAG to deal with on some level, and I, I don't mean to make examples, make too much of them. It is, if I were just an isolated example, I wouldn't bring it up. But as the DC coordination session, we have some obligation, and we have a chance to be part of the solution here. And so, um, I love your idea of waiting till after we do all the work and do the full census uh, to pick a theme. 
um, unless we have a secretariat who's willing to do that and do, you know, I would love to come out, I mean, practically, I would love to come out of here with a theme, you know, and I want to throw one out, just one that I think cross cuts a lot, which is gender. Um, it all, I find it's very good at mobilizing people behind in lots of constituencies. It, it's something that almost all of us have an angle to. This is obviously brainstorming, but um, if we could act, the census would be great. It's, that means we'll, it'll take a couple months and, you know, I mean, it's, and we don't have, we're already crunched on resources and staffing. If there is something we can do here, I think we would relieve the people who have to do the interim work, but if that's the right way to proceed, I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, just that if um, uh, if it comes up in the mag that uh, DCs had uh, very little participation, it, it's necessary to point out that uh, the rooms are uh, disproportionately large, and then uh, the parallel schedules were uh, uh, such that uh, it uh, dispersed attention. So I think uh, it, it did not help the narrative that we had a very big room. And uh, it did not help the narrative that we had uh, other interesting sessions going on parallelly. Thank you. Thank you. That was Siva speaking. No, Marcus. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to come to closure here. I think, uh, well, we have, uh, I think, a broad agreement that we want to continue our work. I think that's the easy conclusion here. And as Avri said, I think it's also, it's not just we want to, we have to, I think. Now we, we are sort of teenagers now. <laughs> coming to the 13th year. So. Uh, there seems to be uh, quite a lot of enthusiasm about finding a common theme, but as Christopher pointed out, it may then be difficult actually to, to find it. And if it's just sort of a motherhood and that papai theme uh, where we're sufficiently high, uh, that may also be meaningless. You made a concrete proposal, that is to, what about gender as a theme? Uh, that is in the air, but uh, I would definitely, uh, and I think we also agreed on, uh, to pick up on what Marianne said, that we really go back to the old uh, procedure and make it mandatory to have a program up in the program uh, paper in time as a condition to be accepted for a workshop that is due to for the secretariat uh, to enforce. Uh, and uh, so my suggestion would be, okay, we co let's continue with our coordination calls also in the new year and that we are ready for the first MAG meeting then to be more concrete. And the mapping proposal was a very concrete proposal that each dynamic coalition makes these bullet points. And lastly, I would again urge you to respond to the email I had sent out about uh, issues for further work for the MAG which come out of your work for consideration and especially think about the comparative advantage of the IGF. There's no point suggesting issues that are dealt with by X organizations already where the, MAG, where the IGF cannot add anything specific, but obviously the specificity of the IGF, the value added is the multi-stakeholder approach. With that, I hand over to you to conclude the session. Thank you. Yeah, Avery speaking. Uh, I got a, a, a couple things. One is one thing we never got by in terms of outreach is how well the booth was used, which was the outreach point. Uh, doing a session where we have a litany of 13, this is who I am, come, come be with us because we're doing outreach is deadly as, as a session we've seen. Well, th that is what happens. You may think it's not what you're suggesting, but it is what happens. Um, whatever, we can, we can find another way to do it. Now, one of the things is remember that a session, a main session, is not guaranteed. So next year, now, one thing I failed at was getting a full session as opposed to a demi-session. Um, so one of the things that you're talking about in terms of the theme, in terms of having development beforehand may actually help whoever is in the mag arguing the DC case, um, you know, which, which I've been doing for three years, you know, and, 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 and such, um, may help them succeed at getting a full session as opposed to a half session, as opposed to no session. So, so I think it's a really good idea that, that as opposed to, oh, well, we'll wait a couple months before things get going again to actually um, 
start working on that because it may actually help whoever it is that's carrying the DC banner in the mag for the next couple years. And other than that, I think it's, you know, it's good that we're organizing. It's, it's good that we're saying that the, the hard things as it were and agreeing and disagreeing, but um, such. So you want the last word, I guess. I guess because you kept quiet the whole time, you figure you get the last one. Oh, okay. I have a question, Avery Olivier Crepin of Blanc speaking. Um, so you're leaving the MAG. Uh, have you identified anyone else who um, would be arguing for the uh, DC's case, or are we basically? <laughs> Dead I, in the water. I, I don't. I don't think you're. you're this is Avery again. I don't think it's, it's dead in the water, but no, someone is going to, the, between the mag, I don't, I don't, you know, we sort of evolved into me doing it last time and, and it just repeated itself. Um, I think that once we know who's in the mag and once we know who's here, may be the best way. So, you know, you, we've got some people who are, you know, sitting here who are kind of like permanent members of the mag, you know, because they were, um, you know, they were organizers of previous uh, sessions, so that may help. We don't know, some of the, the people in this room are possibly on the short list or on the list that's gonna be in the MAG. I think as soon as the MAG list comes out, you can look at who among your, mem your, your, your members is the right person to pick. And now, I'll probably be in this group also as one of, uh, you know, hopefully if the new DC gets going and, and I get chosen, I'll be in the group, but I won't be in the MAG. So no, as of the end of today, I'm not in the mag. You can be on my team at any time. Well, thank when you. Uh, we don't have the dates yet, yeah. but presumably we don't have the mag yet. It presumably be February or so. But the idea is uh, what Avery said. I, I will I will not be in the mag, but I will continue, and I'm based in Geneva. Geneva. <laughs> 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 uh, Israel, you want to say something? Israel Rosas, for the record, uh, I'm a, a MAC representative uh, on behalf of the government of Mexico, so I could advocate for the dynamic coalitions if necessary, right. of course. That, that, that's kind of what I meant by people with a permanent seat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we have to leave. The, there will be other people in this room, so thank you all, and it was a great session, and we will have a call in January, I think. Yeah. Our DC sessions were from Bogner to Room 12. <laughs> 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 <laughs>